Hello, I'm Dr. James Dilley, flint napper, bronze caster and experimental archaeologist. I'm here in County Antrim to discover more about Northern Ireland's prehistoric past. You might recognise the giant's causeway made up of its columns of basalt, but in prehistory there were more important rocks on the tourist trail. I'm here to discover more about the materials the Neolithic inhabitants used to make their tools. During the Ice Age, Northern Ireland was covered by ice sheets, which reflects in the lack of Paleolithic evidence found today. Around 10,000 years ago, these ice sheets began to recede after the cold phase of the Younger Dryas. As the land emerged, the landscape changed and trees began to grow. The earliest evidence of human occupation in Northern Ireland comes from Mount Sandal and dates to around 9,000 years ago. Here a Mesolithic camp of oval tents was occupied by hunter-gatherers who hunted deer, salmon and gathered hazelnuts in forests that grew once the ice retreated. These Mesolithic people made their tools from a number of materials including stone, bone, antler, wood and many more. For their stone tools, they used flint and chert from the local area, which was easy to collect from the coastline and riverbeds. The grey flint, dark chert and quartz was fashioned into scrapers, knives and projectile tips called microliths, which were fixed with resin glue into arrow shafts. As well as small stone tools, Mesolithic people made axes and adzes for tree felling and woodworking. These stone tools were chipped or pecked before being ground into their final shape. A particularly good example was found at Hermitage in County Limerick as a grave good in a cremation. The Neolithic is often thought to be a time period that brings with it pottery, agriculture, stone monuments and ground stone tools. But here in Ireland, their stone tool technology was already ahead of the game. When the Neolithic did arrive to Britain and Ireland about 6,000 years ago, things changed dramatically. One of the first major impacts on the landscape was the disappearance of the Mesolithic forest. It's possible this was caused by environmental factors such as the incursion of wetland or bog, but it does tie in with a shift towards the production of axes to open up areas for settlement and agriculture. Those axes were made from some of the same materials Mesolithic people used, such as flint from the Antrim area. It was also used for cutting tools, scrapers and leaf-shaped arrowheads made via pressure flaking. As well as flint, people started making axes from a dark stone that could be found at Teeth Bully and on Rathlin Island. That dark stone is known as porcelainite for its similarity in appearance to unglazed porcelain. And like porcelain, it can be flaked predictably. The hill of Teve Bullier was created by volcanic pressure that formed an igneous plug of basalt, olivine and dolerite. The porcelainite was created by contact metamorphism with the basalt lava that formed a mullite cordiorite corundum spinel hornfels, but we'll stick with porcelainite. The outcrop at Teevebullier was worked for chunks or large flakes which were roughly flaked into axe roughouts. These were then taken elsewhere for grinding where abrasive stone and water was easy to access. There are estimates of over 20,000 porcelainite axes that have been found in Britain and Ireland with a large proportion of those estimates found in Northern Ireland. Like other ground stone axes, the porcelainite axes would have taken skill to flake and time to grind smooth they would have been valuable tools that could have been indicators of power. A person that could accumulate a number of these axes could have used them as bartering tools. It's possible that ritually offering these objects may have been used as a tool to gain otherworldly power or, again, as a sign of such status that they could afford to offer up such objects. 
possible example of this comes in the form of the Malone or Belfast Axe Horde found at Danesfort in 1873. Nineteen large axes were found wedged into the ground so their blades pointed upwards. Now in the Ulster Museum, they remain a highlight of Ireland's prehistoric heritage. Porcelainite occurs at many places around the world and was used for making stone tools, but the porcelainite here in Northern Ireland has a very close relationship with the production of stone axes specifically. Like porcelainite, Antrim flint was used extensively throughout Ireland and further afield during prehistory. The flint can be found in the Ulster White Limestone Formation, which is made up of several different chalks. The flint can be found in the Galboli chalk, as secondary silicification of burrow infills in the Clowhastican chalk, and as randomly distributed nodules in the Cleggan chalk. The chalk can be found in Ulster, but flint pebbles can be found down most of the eastern side of Ireland on the southern coast, with rarer pebbles on the western coast. As well as the opportunistic collection of flint from the coast, Antrim flint was also mined at Ballygally and Ballycoos to the northeast of Larn. At Ballygally, porcelainite flakes from axes and other exotic materials were found during excavation. This helps to paint a picture that different lithic materials would have been used in tandem during the Neolithic. Like porcelainite, Antrim flint was also used to make axes, but also knives, scrapers and arrowheads. And there's a particularly interesting artifact that was found at several locations, including the tombs of Listergill and Baltinglass. This unusual flint object has been interpreted as a javelin head. It was bifacially flaked into a blank then ground on both faces before a final flaking sequence. Why did they bother polishing it only to then flake it again? Like porcelainite axes, Antrim flint axes made their way around and outside Ireland, and like porcelainite axes, they have been found in hordes. But instead of an Irish horde, one of the better known was actually found in Scotland near Campbelltown. The hoard consisted of five flint axes and a variety of unretouched flint flakes. They would have been imported into an area that had no flint naturally occurring. Tools made of Antrim flint appear elsewhere in Scotland, such as Kilmartin Glen, which continues to see evidence of Irish influence into the early Bronze Age in the form of pottery vessels and metalwork. There was clearly a relationship across the sea between Northern Ireland and Scotland that went beyond just the exchange of raw materials. Materials in demand generally require people to transport them, and people from far away often come with new ideas and styles. But it wasn't just one-way traffic. Workable stone material from Scotland has also been found in Ireland. During the excavation of Ballygally Hill, a piece of pitchstone was found among the hundreds of flint flakes. Pitchstone is found on the Isle of Arran, and the fact a piece of this stone was found at the site of Irish flint extraction could offer many potential stories. We take great pride in the videos produced for the Ancient Craft channel. We would really love to continue making more videos with new tutorials, site visits, artifact showcases, and of course, nap time. We have a Patreon account where you can support us in our efforts. There are competitions and replica artifact giveaways. Check it out here. And thank you to those who have already signed up. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.